how to flex fuel your car in about five minutes. Uh, first thing you need is a part number of the three part numbers that Hundata recommends. I will link them into this video, but this is one that you can copy. I got this sensor from a 2010 Buick Regal from a salvage yard. I uh, paid 20 bucks for it. And uh, this is the model number right here, the part number. 13577394. Um, notice that it has output ground VCC. I will talk about those. This is a genuine GM uh, sensor. It also came with the plug, so I saved a couple bucks there as well. But what we're going to do is we're going to, if you have a Hondata S300 V3, you don't need an analyzer. You can wire this directly into your ECU. So what we're gonna do is just that. This is the return line on my Prelude here. All of my lines have been updated to PTFE, which is rated for ethanol, high ethanol based fuels, because ethanol is extremely corrosive. So don't think that you're gonna be able to do this on regular CPE lines, the rubber black fuel lines, because those will degrade after a while, and next thing you know, you'll be shooting ethanol fuel all over your engine bay. But, um, basically your fuel uh, comes in one side of your rail, which is usually on this side on a stock car. I kept it the stock car way, just for my own reference. Um, and then it feeds fuel through your rail to your regulator, and your regulator, you know, obviously lets out fuel off of the rail back to your tank, and that is, called your return line that goes back to your tank from your fuel rail. And that's exactly where Hundata wants us to put the sensor. And that's exactly where it's set up right now. I went and bought um, crimp lines from, uh, or sorry, crimpers, 3 8 crimpers from Home Depot. Um, I use these on my PEX tubing that I do for with plumbing. Um, and because this is not a high pressure line, the return line is not a high pressure line, um, these should be just fine. I put them over my 6AN um, return line and just crimp them right down. So you can do similarly, or you can, I'm not recommending you use hose clamps, but um, if you want to go down that route, you can use hose clamps or compression fittings for AN lines or even for regular brake lines, or sorry, regular fuel lines, hard lines. So once you have that in, the next thing you have to do, and I'm going to put you on the uh, tripod here and hopefully it stays still enough, but after you do that, then you need to set up your ground and um, it's just a chassis, a chassis ground. So that's what I have rigged up right now. I have my soldering iron here. I already have my shrink tubing over that. Um, and we're going to go inside of this, hopefully really quickly. I just changed the tip on this so that it was a finer tip. So hopefully this solder flows really well. I did flux the uh, did flux the uh, joint beforehand and it is flowing really really good. So I'm just gonna pour that right in there. That's actually a lot. Coolio. And then usually after I put the solder on there, just get a little crimp with the needle nose to compress some of those stray ends. I'll bring the shrink tubing over. And I stole this piece of wire from uh, something I had laying around at the house. So I'm just gonna shrink this tubing. Now on this setup, you have to run a 2.4K resistor. And that has to be run between your VCC, or your power supply, and your output from the sensor. That looks like it's set up pretty good. So as you remember, um, I mentioned the out and the VCC, ground is in the middle. It should say on the sensor um, which one is which but we're gonna go and probably solder, I really wanna solder the sensor inside the car, that way I don't have any problems with it getting wet or having an open joint aside from this one. And all these shrink tubing are for uh, uh, aquatic use, so 
um, I should be fine, but I really still want to keep that resistor in, in the car. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run some 18 gauge wire and I'm going to run probably red for the output and no, let's do red for power um, and then we'll do black for the output signal wire. And then I'm going to run those in through the firewall to the ECU and then we'll get that wired up there. All right guys, so once you get that all wired up, you can run your wires into your uh, engine bay where your ECU is through the firewall. Like I said before, I was using power as the red wire and signal as the black. And part of the reason why I use the signal wire or the output as um, my black wire was because I knew that on the serial port in Hondata, where we had to put the output, it was listed as A and O. See it up top there? You can see the shadow on it, but right there, A and O. So I knew the wire was black and I um, was just trying to keep the colors together. So you take your serial wire uh, harness there, put it in there to A and O. Um, you solder your wires together. Um, and then you take your 2.4K resistor. And I thought it was a good idea to put it right in the joint here. And then you have to run that in between your um, VCC or your power. And I stole power right from the ECU um, power uh, where all, I, all my other sensors come off of. Just because it, it's a you know decent location and I keep all the stuff under here and inside the car versus you know trying to find one outside there or getting one from the fuse panel. Um, but that's pretty much it guys. Once you get all of that wired, I have to solder this up yet. But uh, once you get that all fired up and all your, your connections are wrapped in electrical tape, then you come over and you connect your ground. And this ground is just the chassis ground. Um, so you can wrap it around a bolt somewhere and tighten that bolt down and you have ground. But uh, just so you guys, excuse me, getting hungry, getting burpy. Just so that, sorry, I got the flash on because I was in the engine bay there, but just so you guys can see, you got the output, ground, VCC, VCC is power. Um, I spun these up on drill and ran them through my cruise control hole in the firewall. And uh, that's how it all goes. And you can kind of see here, this one, it's more white, wraps around, and that's the red wire, which I said is the, I uh, actually said that was the power, but I'm pretty sure I have it set up properly. But let me double check here to make sure that I'm not lying to you. And I was right. So the output is still black because the whitish wire goes to the black. And then red goes to the bottom here. So I did that right. You guys can do it right now. And you can do it for 50 bucks cheap instead of buying you know, a $200 kit or something. Probably look like a freak right now. I have a headlamp on. But guys, thanks for watching. Come back and check me out again. Hopefully I don't look like the Michelin man. Um, but maybe next time I won't. Come back and see me like and subscribe.